Uh, I <clears throat> depends on where we go. There I we really go. Don't have much to bend about range etiquette. Oh, that's all right, man. I was just poking a little bit of fun. Oh, that's cool. All right, guys. So we are live. Welcome to Caliber Corner number twelve. We've got a bunch of people joining in on the uh, YouTube side and on the uh, gun the gun channel side. And uh, what we're talking about today is range safety and etiquette. And I think it's a good idea, and I'll kind of give you my rationale why we need to come back and revisit this topic here in a second. Uh, let's see who's checking in with us on the gun channel side. We've got, let's see, Tony. Tony's there. Tony's here. Looks like we got the admin hanging out with us. Patrick is out there right now. Good morning, Patrick, on the gun channel side. Night Strike is out there, too. Maybe he'll be joining us. Um, unless he's here right now. I'm kind of bouncing between three different windows, so... Uh, let's see who else we got YouTube side. We've got grim 90s out there Rich whites out there. Good morning rich and Squibs there squibs here squibs everywhere Scott Pacini's out there See it he's out there. So I think we're all doing good uh, But anyway guys, I, we're just gonna go right into the topic of, of range safety and etiquette. I have no idea um, How long this is gonna last or 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 how long we're gonna talk for um, one of the main reasons why I want to do this, and I know that we all know those basic rules of firearm safety, um, big part of it is so many people in the last couple of years have gotten firearms, have purchased firearms. So many people went out and got their CCWs. As we got closer to the end, uh, uh, right before the election, a lot of people were getting scared. We're going out buying guns. We saw record gun sales. I mean, you can argue this with me, but for the most part, people that I know that normally wouldn't own a firearm went out and got firearms. And these people are going to need to practice at some point. You know, a lot of these people are going to buy a box of 50 shells, go to the range, feel comfortable with the gun, go home, and probably never take it out again unless they have to use it. What I want to do is just cover some of the basics of, of some of these firearm rules, firearms rules that we need to remember. It's always good to go back and revisit this and also maybe share some experiences that we've had at ranges when we were there that maybe caught us off guard or maybe we were a little uncomfortable with or how to approach people at the range if they're doing something stupid. So, guys, anybody want to just start up? Well, you know what, Larry, let's let you guys, let's introduce you guys first. Uh, Tony, Tony, you got anything you want to say? You got anything you want to plug this morning? Uh, come and watch the new and extremely shortened and improved early watch. Every Ooh. fucking day, supposedly. Mm -hmm. 8 a.m. to whenever we wrap it up. Uh, uh, what, uh, East Coast time or Central or what? Central. Central time. Okay, good. The, the, the official time zone for the country. So, it is, it's right in the middle. All right. Uh, all right, Tony, thank you for joining us. Squib, you want to say anything, man? Uh, yeah. Uh, watch Lock and Load Monday nights. I guess that would be 10 Central, 11 Eastern. I don't even know what time it is in Hawaii, but that's why it's so late. A lot of people catch yeah. the show later. <laughs> uh, and we'll have discuss Bitcoin, which isn't real money, and the fact that North Korea is not going to nuke us. And uh, we'll, this uh, Monday, we might be talking about hurricane stuff. Uh, also, Oily's Humble Home. On Thursday nights at uh, 8 Central, 9 Eastern, it's a prepping show. And uh, our last show, we were discussing uh, hurricanes and whatnot. Uh, also, hi, Tony. Hi, Travis. Hi, Travis. <laughs> the Travi are here. And we're all here. We're all here in the chat. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're all up and running. Uh, Zinger just joined us. Zinger, good morning. Good to see you, bud. Awesome. Squib, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Midnight Range TM, known as The Travis. Go ahead, Travis. What do you uh, want to say, man? Not today, brother. Um, no. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, mm -hmm. Got a lot going on. I actually just woke up one of my guys about 20 minutes ago that was supposed to be here an hour ago. So I'm a little busy in the restaurant. But um, yeah, uh, check out the channel. Um, we got some cool videos up. I think I got eight or nine up now. Um, yeah. You, YouTube and VidMe. Oh, yeah. Um, I was denied my verification on VidMe. So if you guys go over and hit me up, um, you know, maybe they'll change their minds next time I apply. And yeah. Um, so we'll see about that. I and um, yeah. I will say this, too. I was talking to Travis earlier. Uh, I'm thinking if I get out early enough, uh, if I get out of uh, work early enough tonight, I may open up a chat um, on YouTube. Just cool. me, a little bullshit session, just a back and forth. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, I can't see the chat right now, but leave it in the chat if you're interested, and these guys will let me know, and, and maybe we'll do one tonight. Travis, yeah, what's I'll your uh, channel name on VidMe? Uh, Travis P11. <laughs> it's pretty original. <laughs> no, not you. Uh, the other Travis. Oh. 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 Yeah, same thing. Been been right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty creative when it comes to those things. As content creators, we really put a lot into our I channel. Know. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, did they? Because Foose was under CS Foose. So yeah, that's was, why I was, didn't know. Yeah, there was a couple people that were different. Yeah. 
did they say why you were denied specifically? Was it you, they want more I, more content? What did they say? I, I got the form letter, just like John was talking. John Z was talking about the other day. He got the same letter. It just said, uh, you know, we can't verify you at this time, and here are some reasons why you possibly were not verified. But it doesn't give you a specific. So, mm. yeah, I'm up to I'm up to sixty followers or sixty one or sixty two or something like that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, not this time, but it is what it is. I'm like cooking videos and guns, man. What 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 else could you want? I mean, I don't think there's any other channels on Vidme that have that, you know? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. I thought they'd be they'd be kinda... maybe maybe they're lactose intolerant. They couldn't handle the mac and cheese recipe. I don't know. They're it's... they're they're freedom intolerant. Yeah, yeah, must be, <laughs> must be. Well, I mean, they've been you know the crowd's been good. I've had I've noticed I've had a lot more people jumping in on the videos and talking to me maybe that weren't over on YouTube. So it is pretty cool, but. Yeah, I, I will say that I've had a couple of new followers that are not gun people, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk shit about them. I mean, they have their reasons. It's their it's their platform. They can do what they want. I just yeah. uh, Eventually, hopefully, I'll get on there. You know? You know yeah, there, definitely. There's a lot of hatred for the kill it and grill it crowd, so... <laughs> well, be. if you watch if you watch Vidme, they've got so much extreme content. I mean, extreme like you get just opposite ends of the whole spectrum, politically speaking, content speaking. I mean, it's I, I they don't really seem to restrict much of anything as long as you're not breaking the law or hurting anybody. They basically let you say whatever you want, you know. Yeah, from they, what I've seen, just kind of poking around. Yeah, they seem pretty open. They seem pretty cool. So no matter what you're looking for, you can find it. Yeah, I mean, there's just a well, it it it's a lot of video game content and a lot of just joke videos or parodies yeah uh, kids, these people kids watch that kids yeah watch. that's probably a big part of their draw yeah um all right well let's just get right into it guys uh talking about the whole range thing let's now since we've got all these new gun owners out there uh what kind of advice can we give somebody going to an indoor or outdoor range let's just focus on handgun for now for the first time what can we tell somebody who's who's never gone to a range before and they're ready to go shoot because i just had this experience with my best friend and his wife Back in May, I took them to an indoor range for the first time, and I, I'll let you guys talk first, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the experience with you after. So you guys chime in, man. Ask what kind of advice do you give? Mm -hmm. Ask the people at the range what the rules are for a copy of their rules, or you know, find out what they expect you to do before you yeah. make a mistake. Read them before you go because you want to make sure you know the rules before you get there and then not have to ask somebody or do something stupid that could possibly get you booted out or yell that from the range officer. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Some range. Yeah, I think that's kind of a no-brainer. You know what I mean? But a lot of people don't have brains anymore. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Some, some ranges are willing to let you bend their rules if you're there by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I was like, a lot of ranges refuse to let you draw from a holster. That seems to be a common one. I've been yeah. to ranges. I'm sorry, Tony. But at my local range, if I'm in the range or down on the outdoor range by myself, they have no problem with uh, trying to draw and stuff like that. Yeah. I've been to ranges where you can see the rules posted on a big sign, and then they've got them posted other places, maybe on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, or they've got some of the more key rules posted all over the place. And you can tell that they've added them as time's gone, gone on because yeah. these are the rules that get broken and they have to p paste it everywhere for all the new people. Mm -hmm. I've been to ranges, whether they've been state run ranges or, or private ranges that are, they're just shooting ranges where you just rent the range. And they're usually pretty good about answer, answering questions or if you screw something up, they say, hey, you can't do this or you, you, know, you, you can't bring that or you, you, that sort of thing. But I've been to <clears throat> private gun clubs where I've been invited as a guest where they just start yelling at you. And there's no po posted rules anywhere or whatever. And I mean, I had to get in one guy's face and tell him, hey, dude, you got a bunch of new people out here today. You're trying to get new members. This isn't the way you get new members by yelling at them because they don't know your rules. That oh, by the way, they're not posted anywhere. You didn't hand out anything. You didn't even have a, you know, a talk. they did a real basic safety thing, but they didn't go over. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And you know, when he said, "Well, where did you learn your safety rules at?" I told him the Marine Corps, and at that point, he backed down. <laughs> I don't like having to do that, yeah. but it just, so I don't, I, and, and I, I can tell you when, when I took my, um, my 14 year old, he's now 16 
to the state range for the first time, uh, he had gone shooting at an indoor range and he had gone shooting down at a family farm in Kentucky and he hadn't been at the state range. And the state range is fairly affordable and it's real close, but they have some strict rules. They're not bad. They're really not, to, to, for, for practice and target shooting, they're really not that bad. And one of the rules is you don't step over the yellow line while people are changing targets. The yellow line separates the uh, general area where you can walk behind all the shooting stations from where you actually stand to shoot. And when we came back around from changing targets, there were still people downrange. My son stepped over the yellow line. I grabbed him by the shoulder and I snatched him back and I said, you do not do that. The range master pulled me to the side later and he said, don't do that with your son. He says, I know what you were trying to do and I totally understand. He says, but when you give them a negative experience like that, you turn them off from shooting. And the yeah. same thing applies to, to other new shooters, not just your kids or your family, it's other new shooters. You don't go, hey, get back off that. What you do is you say, please step back from the yellow line or sir, not until we're done. It's when they do it the second time or the third time in a row, that's where you have to get you know, rude. So I would say the most important thing uh, is make sure that the rules are explained and don't be rude with new shooters. Yeah. So Squib, what'd you think of my range? It's pretty, it's pretty rough, isn't it, man? They're very, very I love strict. your range. I love <laughs> your range. I um, mean, it was, it was almost like a gentleman's, you know, rule kind of there when those guys were coming by to move this uh, stuff with the trailer and the, and the uh, front end loader and whatnot. We just called ceasefire on our own, and we made eye contact. It's kind of like the same thing you do when you when you train people for forklift safety. Uh, you gotta look out for pedestrians. If they don't see your eyes, you know they're they're not looking at you. So I mean, we just we just uh, called ceasefire on our own, and we made sure that they were way clear. And yeah, I mean, I gotta say that it was it was kind of nice not having a Nazi walking up and down the line saying, yeah. "Don't do this, don't do that." But um, I mean, do, have you ever had a situation where you've had a new guy come out to the range and they just start breaking rules and they don't care or what? When I explained that when I took my best friend and his wife out to that range that you shot, I explained to him, I said, it's just going to be me telling you what to do. And I said, if I tell you to do something, I'm going to say, I'm not going to yell at you, but if I tell you what to do, it is for your own safety. I know we're friends. Don't take it personal. It's because I just don't want anything to happen. No, out there, generally, you just, you, you range marshal yourself when you're out there. That's all it is. And when you see me filming my videos, I'm standing in front of the boards and stuff and I'm three feet away. There's nobody else there that whole pistol range is open. So that's why I can do what I do. You know, that's in like my videos and stuff. I'm standing in front turn, I'm facing the camera and this and that. Um, because you just, you just, you just regulate yourself. You just use common sense when you, now they have, I don't know if you noticed this, but there were, there was a little rule sign of like four or five rules posted before you enter the pistol area. And uh, on the website, there's obviously more rules that they yes. have listed that you need to follow, but it's like, just monitor your shooting line, be polite, pick up your trash when you're done and have a nice day. I mean, it's like they don't have to go all crazy about it because they know. And I've never been out there and had anybody think stupid. I've never seen that. That's why I go there because it's not the public range. And again, you know, for a hundred bucks a year, it, it's, it's such a nice place to go. It's, I don't know. I, yeah. I've, I've never seen anybody do anything stupid out there. I've never had a call and call down on somebody and say, Hey, don't do that. You know, if you're um, going to go to the effort to sign up for membership, the information on how much it costs and where it's at and this, that, and the other is also in with the rules on their website. And I did, I did like that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not like there's, you're just coming in off the street. There's three links that you click on and one's the rules. One of them's like the cost and one of them's upcoming events. And that's yeah. pretty much it, you know, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, yeah. but I like the fact that people were allowed to police themselves. We didn't have yeah. to have, you know, the government in on our, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, there's always uh, some sort of discussion going on where it's like, wouldn't it be great if we could all just get along and, and do the right thing just because we're supposed to do the right thing. And at your range, yeah. that's what I felt like what was going on. Well, yeah, it was. Yeah. Let's, let's go with a little bit on what rules are kind of general for a range yeah, because be, beyond the four gun safety rules, there's two or three others that are just general rules that are at most ranges. One is when you're not shooting, you lay the gun on the table with the action open. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whoever's there can be range master and call a ceasefire. Uh Anybody else feel free to chime in? I would say that you you make sure that you don't 
take too much time to reset targets, but you also don't rush and, and screw things up. I've seen people try to staple or pin targets, and then as soon as they get back around to behind the yellow line, the wind blows their target right off. Uh, I come up with a system where I clamp my targets. I buy these multi-packs of these plastic clamps at Walmart. They're about nine bucks for a pack. If you shoot them up, who cares? Just go buy some more. I keep extras in my bag, and I can clamp my targets onto the board and get back behind the line with, you know, I don't run, I don't rush, but I'm not going to be the D-bag that uh, holds up everybody for 12 minutes when really we could do the target change in probably six, because that's one of the biggest complaints of my range is every 15 to 20 minutes, they call ceasefire for target change. And there's always somebody out there who's, I don't know what they're doing, but they're taking <laughs> forever. You know, another thing too is I'll bring extra targets and I'll go up there and I'll swap out targets. And since we have 15 to 20 minutes between target change, I'll put the little pasties on the old target behind the yellow line while everybody's shooting and we're taking our time as opposed to, you know, necessarily pasting. Now, at, at other ranges, like at your range, Travis, if there's nobody yeah. there and you're policing yourself, you got all the time in the world and you can, yeah. you know, but that is at, at, at my range, at my state range, that's one of the biggest complaints is the guys <laughs> complain that they're either taking their time trying to side in and the tar and the and the target changes are too soon or that they 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 shoot a bunch of holes in their target and they want to change the targets and the target changes are too far apart yeah. and but um, I would say just don't be the guy that don't don't rush and and trip and fall and bust your face or or something like that but don't be the guy that takes up too much time you ruin it for everybody else another important thing <clears throat> clean the fuck up after yourself yes. oh yeah oh yeah please yeah um, I think I think new shooters that go there, you know, they might not have the experience of somebody they don't know telling them telling them what to do. So, I, if you're going to go to a range and you've never been in one, be expect to be not really bossed around, but told what to do, and don't get all butt hurt over it because it's for your safety. And that was something I explained to my friends. I said, if I tell you to do something, just don't get mad. Just do what I tell you to do because they might be muzzle waving. They might not realize the guns. They might have their finger on the trigger while they're walking up to the firing line. It's I wanted them to have a good experience, but I said, you also need to understand just a little bit of discipline behind it. They were cool about it. We had no problems whatsoever. You know, we had done yeah. the indoor range too, but well, I think people need to know if you're going to go, there will be people telling you what to do and you just need to deal with that. You know, don't get all mad about it and go on Facebook and complain about it, right? That's just how it is at a range. Realize that I would a say mistake will get people hurt or killed. Or yes. Good. That's it. That's all it's about. That's what it's about, man. I know two of the things at my range um, that people get, I would say, busted on the most, um, and, they're, and they're pretty strict at my range, which is cool. Uh, I'm fine with that, obviously, is um, if you're at the rifle range and somebody is going to change a target, Nobody is to even touch their weapon. Not, you know what I mean, loaded, unloaded, put it in or out of a case, nothing. Um, you know, and that's, I think that's fair. Uh, also, your muzzle yeah. has to be pointed down range, even if you're not at the line. Um, if your rifle is at a table behind you, like there's tables set up behind us as we're shooting, you know, so you can set your gear on. Those muzzles have to be pointed down range. Um, and in the indoor range, um, you know, there's a yellow firing line, just like I think most, you know, most ranges do. Um, but your gun has to be holstered, um, whether it's loaded or unloaded behind that line. And that's actually something I got busted on once. I actually got done shooting, <clears throat> put my, put my carry ammo back in my mag and put my mag in. I didn't chamber around, but I turned around and started walking back towards my range box, which wasn't on the line with me. And, you know, one of the old guys, one of the guys, you know, said, hey, hey, where are you going, you know? And, uh, you know, even after I said, yeah, I don't have a brown chamber, you know, he's like, oh, hey, still can't do that. I'm, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I get busted at the range every once in a while for the not leaving the action open. Yeah, we're uh, supposed to use flags. We're supposed to use the chamber flags. Yeah, yeah I, I bring I bring flags for uh, most of my my guns, or sometimes I'll even pack extra ones. Uh, sometimes you know the pistol one fits better in a shotgun, or a shot one fits better in a rifle, or whatever. But uh, we used to use flag safeties in the military, and that's where I learned how to to do it. And I know a lot of people don't have them. I know at the one gun club I went up by the state capitol, you had to have a flag safety, or else you weren't shooting on that range. So it just depends on what the rules are. But at our range, it's open action or flag safety. Yeah. One or the other 
they want to do a quick visual inspection before they move those yellow chains and let people walk out to change their targets. So they'll have a guy walk by and uh, check every single st- – I mean, it's 60 stations. It, it takes a while to Ooh. check them all. So the, the more time they spend fooling with your firearm, checking if it's unloaded, the less time you're shooting. And that's just yeah. it. It's kind of like a courtesy to other shooters. It's just like not taking too long to change targets. Or yeah. like you were talking about, making sure that you don't touch the firearm while people are downrange. Would you want somebody – fiddling around with their gun while you got your back to them 50 yards down range. No, yeah. you would. So you just, it's professional, personal courtesy. Yeah. The only time I've ever done it, I was actually at the range with my, my 308 that I bought recently and I was clean. I was breaking it in. I was cleaning it in between shots and a guy walked, you know, and I, and I asked him, I said, are you, are you comfortable with me cleaning this while you're changing your target? And he said, yeah, go ahead. And I mean, I think, but that's a, that's an open you know, being open and talking to the people around you, I think, is really good. It's Well, you meet people. You meet a lot of cool people that way. Yeah, you do. But, well, I'll tell you, yeah. with my range, and one of the things I was really going to rant about was knowing what the hell you're talking about before you approach somebody. Because yeah. I had my brooders out there laying on their sides with the gate open. Guy comes up to me and says, hey, you're supposed to have the actions open on those. Thinking, you know, like Smith & Wesson where you swing the cylinder out. I'm like, that is the action open on. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. that We've got six range officers at the state range I go to, and uh, they all do know the difference. I mean, they've actually had to help some people. They have a new guy pull the gun right out of the box and go, I don't even know how to load this. And there they are just, you know, showing them and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it is, it is good to have somebody out there who, whether it's, um, you know, somebody's range officer for the day because they're the first one on the range or because they work there that they actually know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nice strike is joining us. He is yeah. here. Nice strike, man. Are you in your canoe yet? Or are you going down no, the flooded? No, no. Oh, messing with you. People, people <laughs> buy guns and they don't even, what you can't you can't search a YouTube video. Everything's on fucking YouTube these days. You can't search a video to load your gun. Hell, most gun manuals that come with the new fucking guns in the box tell you somewhat how to load the damn gun. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. Have yeah. To that out and you have to ask for questions. Night. You are really some stupid. people. Night strike when the guy walks fun. up to. When, when a guy walks up to pay his fee and it's his first time, he found the range on, on a website or somebody told him about it, and he's got a cardboard box that says Palmetto State Armory, and there's an AR in there, and he has no idea what he's doing, and you start talking to him like that, he's going to walk off the range, and he's not going to want to shoot anymore, or he's not going to want to come to that range and get to meet some really nice people. And next thing you know, you've helped somebody get into shooting. And next thing you know, yeah. he's got his kids all into right, shooting. He's right, got his wife right. into shooting. You win. You win. You win. I'm not, you it's not about but, winning. It's it's about it's about trying to be good ambassadors for what we do. Some yeah. people need a great big sign saying "bullets go here." But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, there is. We do have a general lack of common sense. If people don't like to read instruction manuals, they want a quick start manual. I can see that happening where somebody would come up and do it. But the better thing to do would be walk up to the person and say, "Hey, can I show you how to take that apart?" So you. Can can reassemble it if you need to or can i can i show you how to how it's going to function you know i have um, had to bite my tongue at the range because somebody was spewing facts that were bs they sounded oh, like man. yeah and i just <laughs> bit my tongue and then later you know whoever i was with said look they said this this isn't true but i just let them go because they were trying to be nice or trying to do the right thing and that's all good and fine and that doesn't mean that every time somebody spews facts yeah and, you know it's just it's it's a matter of trying to treat people the way you would want to be treated, trying to have a How good the hell experience. You when that, your uh, it ain't easy because I got a mouth on me. But it's just it it's it's the whole <laughs> what, like what that range master is trying to tell I've me. You don't want to <laughs> uh, you don't want to you don't want to reinforce some negative experience, and now you've turned somebody away. All right. Luckily, I don't have to. Me- I don't have to mess with all that because I'm here to represent the uh, backyard uh, gun crowd. There you go. There you go. So, yep. Yep. But so, Night Strike, you uh, can't afford ammo to shoot, so why bother? Um. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that, that's why I buy steel case now. I there you afford, go. I can hey. afford to buy steel case and use that, and I'm I'm using that right now. So. I've been I've been happy with. I'm I'm not yeah. reloading steel case. I'm just buying. You know. Lots of seven six two by thirty nine. It's shitty that because that 40, works. Forty rounds for ten bucks. Forty hey, rounds for ten bucks. I mean, what the hell? That, 
at the end of the day, reloading is still cheaper. Yeah, I know that, but I'm not. I don't have a. I don't have a place to reload. I don't have a garage. That's that's another thing about talking to new shooters at the range. You got a guy who comes out there with a whole bunch of ammo he bought at the sporting goods store, and he doesn't know anything about guns. And you start helping him out and showing him stuff, and next thing you know, he says, "Why are you picking up the shell casings off the ground?" Oh, it's because I reload. Oh well, what's reloading? And either yeah. A, he gives yeah. you all his brass bonus, or B, he says. I'd like to learn about this. And next thing you know, you get somebody else into your sickness. So what we need to do is rebrand yes, reloading with. to recycling. I uh, recycled the ammo. There well, we go. That's not rebranding. It's just changing the word. Don't yeah. just say reloading. Say, oh, I'm recycling. I'm going to reuse this brass. I recycle you know, you gotta, my ammo. Remember, reduce, reuse, and recycle. How the hell is that not rebranding? Well, did you actually go to English class in school? No, I think I think it is more recycling <laughs> than rebranding, because you got a head stamp. Yeah. No, 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 no. God damn it, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm just confused right now. Are we are we recycling, rebranding, reusing? What are we, we doing? Need, what? We need to rebrand the term reloading to reloading. recycling, so the yuppies will fall in line. Yes. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. That that's why you could call it recycling. You're recycling your shells. Um, and, and, you know, you go get into terminology there when you got the new shooter out there. They're calling it a clip, and you calmly explain to them, "No, it's a magazine." magazine. Then you pull out a stripper clip and show them what a clip is. Yeah, <laughs> I don't when they call that. it a bullet, and you say, "No, it's a cartridge." The bullet well, is the thing that flies out the end of the cartridge. Wait, wait, Squib, do you pull? Do you pull out the the uh, the end block clip and tell them this is a clip? Uh, well, uh, the end block or a stripper for my Mosin or a stripping for my a stripper for my Enfield or even the stripper for the magazine on my AR-15 with the little tool and show them how you load the stripper clip into the magazine. Oh, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can show somebody what a clip is. I mean, if I had a Ramada right? with moon clips, I'd pull out a, I'd pull out a moon clip, right? Right. You know, when Marlin packages their magazines and they say magazine clip on the label, I'm fine with people using whichever term they want. I don't care. No, I don't. I don't belittle them. I just yeah. explain to them because you got people out there who have no idea what a stripper clip is or where this come from or that sort of thing. Just like everybody uses the term bullets. I like to say cartridge. And, and uh, sometimes when I do my reloads, I'll put one of the bullets for that reload in with uh, the reloads, and when somebody says, you know, uh, what is that, and this, that, or the other, I'll show them, and I'll go, this is a cartridge, and this is a bullet that you can't see how much of it is into the into the case, and then I explain to them what a case, and a primer, and a bullet is, really? and I just think it helps them overall understand the whole aspect of shooting. It's not just loading this thing up with something you bought at Walmart, and pointing it, and pulling the trigger. I say yeah. bullets a lot of the times, especially in gun channels, because I'm just fucking needling people. Nice. I always call them, I call them rounds. But I'm the same way I call them rounds also. That's rounds. This is how you start up a conversation at the range, and then you find out the person is a new shooter, and you you get to you get to help them uh, understand why the safety stuff is there and why some of it might seem boring or it might take more time or whatever, but it keeps everybody alive so they can come back the next week and shoot. Wait, guys, I got the hipster. I got the hipster term for recycle. Okay. We're going to start using uh, reclaim. We're using reclaimed uh, oh, no, shells. No, no, no reclaim. Reclaimed. No, when you huh? pick up, if somebody asks you at, when you're at the one of these public ranges what you're doing when you're picking up the brass, tell them you're doing brass reclamation. Oh, this is brass. Look, it's the newest thing. Everybody's doing it. It's and then they'll be like, really? And then their little skinny jean butts will come over there and start helping you pick up brass. <laughs> so. No, we just got to, you got to hit the right term because that's what kids identify with. There's this terminology that just, you know, turns the light on. So, yeah, I, I, I that was my whole damn point. <laughs> look at, look, guy, look at the internal. I got, I've got 51 words that are synonymous with recycle. I'm sure we can agree on one that we can start pushing out there and suddenly make it popular. So we have, um, we have a big crowd of hipsters, do we? <laughs> well, no, we want to bring them. We want no, to bring them in. No, we want no, to bring we them don't in, because so. we're all in the mainstream music. So I don't, I doubt it. <laughs> I yeah, I didn't. I didn't know Ghost was in the chat. I just heard him talk, and I was like, "Who? Jesus, is that you? What is that?" Who is that? <laughs> Ghost, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. Hey, you just came thanks in for inviting too. me, I appreciate man. It. Well, thanks I, for inviting me. 
this is awesome. This is awesome. So do you want to share anything like uh, just just what kind of advice would you give somebody going to a range for the first time? We did discuss know the rules. And I said, expect to be told what to do. Don't get all but hurt over it. What can you say to the new shooter going to a range for the first time? I mean, one of the very first things that uh, I always teach people that I go out there with that are new is uh, explaining the difference between a cold range and a hot range. And it's, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, they might hear cease fire and they, most people would understand what cease fire means just because it's basically self-explanatory. Yeah. But some people don't use that terminology. Sometimes, Hey, the range is cold or Hey, the range is hot. And some people yeah. may not understand what that means. And so the terminology, and I don't say just that, but just terminology in, in general, because a new shooter isn't going to be familiar with the terminology that we use a lot. That's an, an addition to that. I would say you need to pass on to them that anybody can call a ceasefire if they see something unsafe. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, and man. Good. That's, yeah. I think I think you say they can, but they should. There's a, there's, yeah, like you know my, I mean? my range, we don't have range officers, so it's, it's kind of like Travis, I guess, or whoever was saying that they don't have safety officers or range officers. It's anyone can kind of come up there, so whoever's there, you know, it, it, you have to communicate and say, hey, you yeah. know, um, I get I, I got to go check out my target or something. So make sure everyone around there knows what's going on. Now, yeah. I just I want I just want to state that my range, we do have a range master range marshal that's generally there just to maintain the property. He won't come up and bother you while you're shooting. So there is a person there on site, but they're not at the range. They're not on the firing line telling you what to do. They're there if you have questions. They're there if you have problems. But they have a ranch house there on the property that somebody is always at. Generally, like, you know, between 9 to 5. But there is a person. I don't want to make it sound like we're just shooting in an open field. We do have a person there, but they're not as they're not going to come up and tell you, you stand here and shoot there, you know, because you just you just take care of yourself. But, yeah, um, I wanted to get that out. Yeah. Mine's same way. We have two or three people that are always there, but. They're doing maintenance on the facilities and the grounds and whatnot. Yeah. There's not a range officer. The first person on the range is the range officer or range master. Yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've got two to three state employees on duty at any given time. They've got a tower. And, uh, you know, while we're, we're resetting targets, sometimes they're out there patching. They'll ride out on the little golf cart and, and, and uh, fix the stands that we put the targets up on and whatnot. And out of the six guys that are that are there, there's usually only about two or three at any given time. Five of them are really good guys. One guy is a total jerk, and you just have to put up. You know, he's he's a state employee. What can I do? You know, if I don't like it, I can pay more and shoot shoot other places. And and that's something else too. You might pay more to shoot at one place, and you've got ni better rules or or different conditions. I'd say the two biggest complaints at my range are no rapid fire, and if you are moving from, say, the 25 to the 50 yard or the 50 yard to 100 yard, you have to case your firearm and carry it over there in a case. You can't just, you know, rack it and have the action off. open yeah. or put it in your holster. Well, you can open carry at the range. Yeah. You can put okay. It in your and stuff. But just the fact that people don't like, even if you're shooting next to somebody and they say, would you like to shoot my gun? You walk over to their station. They don't hand it over to you. And that's a rule that's broken a lot at my range is they'll hand it over or somebody will walk behind a yellow line with with the firearm even if they're they've got the chamber open or whatever it is it's not in a case and that that's that's a big complaint about people they want to be able to rapid fire they want to do mag dumps and they don't allow that at my range and they want to be able to go from place to place without having to go through the air quotes hassle of yeah. slipping your 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 firearm into it. it's not really that big of a deal i mean yeah, we nice. don't have range masters at all. We don't have anybody. Yeah. We have they have some, um, and they're in charge of, you know, the, the when they do um, events and uh, when there's maintenance to be done, they're, they're the ones that oversee it and everything. But I mean, I, I can go to the rifle range, indoors or outdoors, and I mean, it's a ghost town, which is it's good and it's bad because I think a lot of times it is nice to have somebody there um, for the new for new shooters. But my, my range tends to have, you know, a, an older membership demographic, I guess is the proper word to say. <laughs> um, and they police themselves. You know, you got some, some Tonys running around making sure that uh, they're cranky to the right people. <laughs> well, I, I try to, I try just, to explain to new shooters. 
I try to explain new shooters. Yeah, the reason yeah, they man. want you to put the firearm in the case when you move from the 25 to the 50 is it's in the case. Nobody has to watch what you're doing or think, is it loaded? Is it not loaded? Does he have his finger on the trigger? It just rules it out. And that's the bottom line. It rules it out. It's just like, you know, when, when you call a cold range, you put your firearm down, you open the, the, the loading gate or you, you open the, the chamber or you, you put the uh, flag safety in or whatever, you rule out the fact that anybody is there with a loaded gun with their finger on the trigger, period. And yeah. I don't think people understand that if you rule it out, nobody has to be watching their back. Yeah. So, no, uh, I I'll tell you. Here, I want to say that I rarely ever call anybody out at the range that I didn't bring there to teach the shooting. Like my six-year-old grandkids and stuff. Otherwise, I don't bother people unless they're doing something blatantly stupid, which is rare. Yeah, I, I mean, as a member, you have to, you know, for me, you know, you have to have two sponsors, and then to shoot indoors, you have to qualify. You know, so I mean, it is, it is a little more exclusive as far as the people that are there. You're not getting. There, are, there was a range years ago around here that was a private range indoors, and uh, I had a buddy that used to go there, and he stopped going there because he didn't have to be a member, you know, and he'd be there after work or something, and just the, the craziest yahoos you could ever think of would be swinging in and just turning the place, you know, inside out with, you know, range fire all over the place, and it's, it's a mess, so, yeah, I, there's, there's good and bad. And that's just it. If you exercise proper range etiquette as far as safety and cleanup and things like that, you're going to make the place the kind of place people want to go to and the kind of people that you want to you know, be shooting with that you feel safe around or you can communicate with are there. But when you've got a place that, yeah, it's just it's it's a free for all or you've got people constantly breaking the rules or complaining or whatever it is, you're going to want to find another place to shoot. There's a place about 90 minutes from me called the Lapeer Pit and it's out in the middle of nowhere and it is just an open um, area. They dug out they dug out uh, the side of a hill and uh, they've just got some concrete blocks and it's first come first serve and there's maybe I don't know 15 20 parking spaces and you have to wait for somebody to leave if you want to if you want to get one of those parking spaces and they're full and you can shoot anything you can shoot tannerite you can shoot clays you can shoot uh, bowling pins you can shoot fruits and vegetables whatever it is you want to shoot you can shoot a machine gun out there you can rapid fire you can mag dump you, sh you can shoot any kind of ammunition you shoot dragon's breath you know whatever you want to do and it's up to somebody to yell cease fire and then you have to trust that everybody has you know kept their finger off the trigger and and, and you know not uh not had a loaded firearm pointed down range or whatever. And then people go out and change the targets and whatnot. And I went there once to do a range cleanup just to see what the place was like. I didn't bring any guns didn't do anything. And I was talking with the people there and, and that sort of thing. And the people that go there go there because they don't like the strict rules at the state run ranges or at the private ranges. They want to be able to do a mag dump with armor piercing ammo, or they want to bring one guy brings out his 1919 machine gun. He's got a water cooled machine gun he brings out there and just unloads nice. it. Has a so you, yeah, I know. So there, but I'm sure I didn't ask, but I'm sure that there are times where you're going to have somebody out there that is doing something that's making everybody else uncomfortable because you don't have that structure, you don't have the rules. It's a gentleman's agreement and that sort of thing. And you're always going to have that one rule breaker. You're going to have that. And, you know, you just got to be able to, to handle it well. I think if you just try to talk to somebody calmly and if they don't like it, you know, if, if, if you're at an open range where anybody can go, that's one thing. What are you going to do? But if you're at a private range or state run range, they can eject them. I mean, I have seen uh, situations where, like I said, by the third time they're telling the person, they're yelling at them, but not the first or second time. So. By the way, that's exactly why I have my backyard gun range, because <laughs> no, honestly. No, you have a backyard range because you've been kicked out of every other range you've ever been to. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> too, many, too many striking at night, huh? I've, too many striking I've never at been night. kicked out of range one. And two, I have a backyard gun range because I don't want someone telling me I can't fire too fast. I can't fire too slow. I have to fire at a certain rate. Or I can't use my bump fire stock. Well, see, that's just it. For me, I pay $4 no. all day and my kids shoot for free. Right. 
okay, for four dollars all day, it's a ten minute drive down the road. And now, granted, they're only open four days a week, and sometimes you're waiting and that sort of thing to get over to megaphone to say, uh, you know, so and so for uh, twenty five yards. That means somebody walked off the twenty five yard now that's open. You know, that's it's really not that long of a wait. But for four bucks, dude, I don't mind only being able to load six rounds in a thirty round magazine. I don't mind the slow fire. I don't mind the target change every fifteen to twenty minutes. If you own your own property and you want to pay property tax and maintain it and that sort of thing or if you want to be a part of a gun club where they let you do that but now you're driving 30 minutes or an hour or 90 minutes or you're paying a hundred dollars a year six hundred dollars a year but, whatever it is everybody's got the, what they're willing to do in order to go shooting it's, about Me, it's 10 minutes and four bucks and i'll put up with the rules but but squib here's the uh, question i have for you can you go shoot with your blue dress on without having to worry about flack from anyone else you know I, Probably not. I would say that they accept all kinds at my range. <laughs> okay. Because I was going to do a mic drop there, but no. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow thanks, See, I, so I can do that. He can go out. Right. He's on his own he land. He can have nothing at all. Go out in his backyard and just boom. I'm, you know, whatever. And we are man. all waiting for that video. Well, you why, do why you and I strike. You do you, you in the words of Matt, right? I see. I don't we, think that Night Strike understands like how many views he would get if he actually oh. just embraced it. Super just chat. Just embrace it, man. Oh, my oh. God. Dude, no, you, I, it would be you, it would you could make a living off of that shit. His new show could be called Devil with a Blue Dress on, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's right. I we need to go beyond this. I think we need to crowdfund a speedo for him. That's what I think. I No. Ooh, absolutely. Nobody not. Needs to you, do that. you would have a million subs overnight. I mean, seriously. You know was sponsored by Palmetto State Armory. He had a rocking that speedo. beard. Oh. Rocking that beard. You could be a superhero. No, I mean, no, look it, how had to be, it had to be look. sponsored by a BB, uh, a BB round or bullet uh, company. Cause I mean, that's just, you know, I don't even own a Daisy. Cross the air guns, proud sponsor of Devil in the Blue Dress. <laughs> you guys directed my future ability. To <laughs> all right, so, so I want to get. All right, go, go ahead, go guys. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say one more thing, real quick, yeah. and talking about the private range and, and your backyard ranges. I would love to have a backyard range to do what I wanted to do, but there's a part of me that I enjoy going out to my local range on a Saturday right. afternoon right. because I get to go practice during the week whenever I want to, so usually there's not a lot of people there, but on Saturday at 2 o'clock is when the all old, crusty veterans go up there and they go shoot their guns, and I just like honestly sitting back there and listening to these guys talk. So a lot of times I, don't, I won't shoot very much up there, I'll just sit there and listen to those guys talk and talk about what they used to do. And they've got some really cool old guns they bring out. So that's the side I enjoy going to the range. I well, want to be able to make uh, a few reloads that I'm trying out something new, walk out in my backyard, shoot it in my berm, make sure it works, maybe even chrono it, and then go back and then make up a batch of 100 or 500 or something like that. Because I'm not having to pack up all my crap, drive down the street, pay my fee, get in there, that sort of thing. Uh, or if right. I just want to do a little bit of practice, go out in the back and I've got a small berm and I can do pistol or something like that and just practice. But yes, I agree. I like to go out there. I like to, like to meet other shooters, socialize, maybe meet up with some friends out there, whatever it is. I'd like the ability to do both. I mean, a lot of us are envious of Unite Strike because you can just go out in your backyard and, and, you know, do what we would all like to do. But there is something to be said about the social about I, or I being in a gun club. I, I was, I, was I understand that, but I, I do want to mention this. Just because I have a backyard gun range does not mean I don't pick up after myself. Okay, yeah. maybe I might not. I might not pick up all the steel case <clears throat> rounds uh, or the cartridges, or maybe some of the uh, some of the aluminum case. I may let that just go wherever. But I always pick up the brass because I save the brass for when I do actually have some place to start reloading. I, that is in the future. I am planning on that in the future. Just right now, I don't have a garage, and my shit has an open gaping hole in its side from uh, uh, Hurricane Matthew last year. So I don't really have a nice and close space where I can reload because the family doesn't want me reloading it in the house. Well, then I'll be right back. One thing to be said yeah. about having your own shooting range is you pick up your own brass. When you go to a, a another range where there's lots of shooters and less than half of them are reloaders, you leave with more brass than you came in with. Uh, you but know, unless it's against the rules there. That doesn't mean I don't pick up after myself when I'm shooting my targets because I use all makeshift targets. That doesn't mean I leave them lying around like I've seen, you know, with some. I've heard uh, horror stories of uh, some public ranges where people just let shit lying around 
And oh, yeah. They haven't yeah. picked up after themselves because they shot it, and they're like, oh, well, I shot it. I'm done with it. I'm leaving. Yeah, well, Yankee did that video once where he went out to that range and he was Absolutely. shooting footage where they were doing a cleanup. And that's what inspired me when I got the email notification about the Lapeer pit getting cleaned up. I'm like, you know, I always want to check out this place and stuff. And I mean, if Yankee can do it, I can do it. And I went out there and I volunteered to do a cleanup. And I've done range cleanups in the military, too. So I knew what was what to do and what was going on. And when when they, it was all done, everybody pulls their their trucks and SUVs up to these concrete uh, uh, blocks and they're all dropping their tailgates and opening their hatches and getting under guns and going, what, you ain't shooting too? It's like, no, I just came here for the cleanup and that sort of thing. And, and they were they were totally surprised. But uh, yeah, it's something. And, and, and in that case, when you do something like that, you shoot at a, a or you shoot somewhere and you, you do a, a cleanup, you once again, you get to socialize, you get to meet with other shooters and you learn new stuff. I mean, when, when I go to the Rangers, all kinds of people say, Hey, I'd like to shoot your gun. And I let them shoot. Or they say, would you like to shoot my gun? And sure. Okay. And that sort of thing. And, um, you know, there's lots of, lots of things about that, but you have to make sure that you stay within the rules when you're at yeah. the ranges and do that. Do you, yeah. Do you realize how many people are missing out on the experience of meeting night strike by you shooting in your backyard? <laughs> Here's here is the thing. You probably get free you do, you do any autograph sessions. Right? I, I, I now have friends of a friends coming with my friends over to my range because I am literally the only guy in town that has county land that I can shoot on. In at least you know at the edge of the of the city because all the other ranges are either forty or fifty miles in either direction, or the only guy that has like three hundred acres is like. 30 miles outside of town, whereas I'm right at the edge of town that they could just, you know, if they live right in the middle of town, they can just drive over and come in the backyard and shoot with me. That's cool, man. You know, so. All right. So now there's a segment of the show I want to move to. Let's, let's share stupid things that we've seen people do at the range. Let's, let's not refer to ourselves, but just dumb things that you have seen people do at the range. And this might help anybody from thinking twice so they don't make the same mistakes. Is there anything you guys have ever seen? We're like, whoa, 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 hey. <laughs> Anything ever pop up that you guys have run into? Tony? Uh, Any ideas? Just blatantly just dumb thing. Uh, like somebody, somebody just sit there and pump the gun right in front of you. or you know, like, a, I've seen people fire their first shot at a target and turn around with the gun in their hand, just, pointing it at the person standing beside <laughs> them, saying, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely one of them. I'm trying to think if I hadn't seen it. Squib, you, you got any negative experiences? I know your range has is, is got a lot of rules to it, but have you seen anything? Or have you ever seen anybody get chewed out for anything just just that everybody should know is wrong? Or You know, I'm trying to think. You? Even, even yeah. going back to the military, I'm trying to think of whether it be shooting on private land, whether it be in the military, whether it be shooting at a gun club, at a state range, at a private range, at an indoor range, outdoor range. I... Don't recall off the top of my head. I can't think of anything that I've seen. that has been, I mean, I've, I've read stories about accidents and things like that, but yeah. I mean, you always, you, you know, you look and you see a bullet hole where it shouldn't be. And you're wondering how did this happen? Or uh, like when we used to throw grenades, we're in a concrete uh, bunker and there's all kinds of holes all in these cinder block walls. And you're going, who dropped the grenade and it blew up in here. <laughs> but yeah, I don't recall ever being around for, for any well, of those accidents or or just scoop i don't know if you noticed when you were with me at the range that couple showed up to shoot steel next to us and that guy was with his wife and they and i think she was a fairly new shooter because he was showing her how to use that gun did you notice that they were behind us and they were going to start shooting they weren't watching the firing line I, and I, noticed, I don't know if you i noticed that i also noticed she said she was she said something like no i'm okay i'm good like i don't think she she was really interested in shooting but yeah she did like one mag and and the funny part is you and i started we walked back to our vehicles and i walked up and i said okay you guys are good to shoot now and the guy looked at me like i was insulting him he's like what i'm like you were gonna shoot steel behind us yeah we're right in the path of ricochet splatter I mean, I didn't say anything because you and I were halfway down the firing line, I, and I walked up to him and I'm like, "I said, you guys are you guys are clear to shoot now. We're we're done. You know, we're gonna go back walk back to the vehicles." And he's like, "What? Oh, okay." I'm like, "The guy had no clue we were even there." And I know he was yeah. into his trying to get his chick to fire his new sig, but I'm like, "Dude, geez, geez, the common sense, man." So I mean, I was a little upset, but I'm like, "Well, maybe I've never seen him at the range before. You know, he yeah, was but... there for the long distance competition, and maybe he's out of town or had done shoot there very much, but still, you know." 
yeah no you were you were cool and you had it handled and then uh, yeah, i figured this is your range and uh, you know uh you were looking around more than i was i should have been looking around more uh but you were looking around more than i was and and i, I yeah i i just figured you, you had it you had it covered you seemed to you know uh there at, at yeah. the range i go to probably the biggest rule that are broken once again is rapid fire which isn't really a safety thing it's more of a noise thing for for out there we got all the rich people that live on the lake near the range that constantly complain and they are they donate a lot of money to local politicians when they go for re-election so they've tried to get our state range closed before uh so that's the reason they don't do the rapid fire it's not to be fun governors it's about the noise go, the go other to their neighborhoods and is, invite them go to order to do some flyers and say hey i just want you know, we're not soliciting we just it's an open invitation come on out and shoot with us <laughs> these people have so much money that they're at the local snobby gun club which i can hear <laughs> oh, okay. in my backyard yeah. all the time and i will not be a member up there because they're such snobs i've been up there they're they're yeah, but um, that and uh, just the people moving from one station to the other or passing their handgun to the person next to him at the other station, and that's a rule violation. And it's just more one of those, it's not really that we don't think you're not going to have an unloaded gun and just pass it over. It's just if you put it in the case, it sort of rules it out kind of. I mean, I suppose you could have a loaded firearm drop the case, and it's a, if it's a 320, it'll go off or whatever. I don't know, but but it's just the, the whole um, – that that's probably the biggest but i mean we had one guy out there he was all tactical he was wearing camo pants and had all the stuff and the guy was messing with his firearms messing with firearms and they called a cold range and he came over to yellow line like everybody else and when we all went to go change targets he stepped back over to yellow line and just started fooling with his gun again and i i don't know what he was doing with it if something was jammed or whatever and they kept yelling at him and he just would not listen. And then when we were all done changing targets, he went and got his targets and then he wanted to move the chain and go change after, you know, uh, we'd all been out there for 10 minutes. So he held up the range for everybody else. He was, I mean, but that really it's, it's just, that was more etiquette than safety. I think a big one with new shooters that yeah, there's some comments going on the YouTube side where they've seen people looking down the barrel after a gun malfunction. New shooters, man, they need to understand that if it doesn't go bang, they need to, you know, call you over there or they need to know how to take out the magazine and clear it. That's also something I think is people, the first thing like, what's wrong? And, you know, they got the finger on the trigger and they're looking down the barrel. Um, that That's a big one. I mean, some of the comments you guys are sharing on the YouTube side are, are pretty amazing. Some of the stuff that you've seen before, like guy shot a hole in the ceiling and started walking out to go look at it while everybody was, the range was hot. It's like, holy crap. So... Yeah, man, that kind of stuff scares me. Well, um, now I've I've uh, loaded up a couple squibs, hence my name. And uh, the first time I did, I got a one jammed down the barrel of uh, my 1911, and I racked the slide back, and I was I was certain that there was there was a bullet halfway down the barrel, mm -hmm. and I didn't have any tools in my bag to, to to deal with that, so I walked it all the way over to the tower holding the 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 gun uh by the by the back of the slide point with the muzzle pointed down letting everybody know the slide is open and and i'm out of you know i'm i'm not pointing it and went over there because they had the longer um cleaning rods and they had them welded together so you didn't have to worry about snapping off or breaking them and i'm actually taking a cleaning rod and i'm you know, hitting this thing like like a muzzle loading uh, uh, rifle to knock this this bullet out of the barrel, and that was definitely a rule violation. But I didn't know what else I was gonna do. Well, what I decided to do after that was two things: one, uh, try to put a few more tools in my range bag to be able to do that at the station with the firearm with the muzzle pointed down range, or two, if that happens ever again. Put the firearm in the case, go home and deal with it. Don't do that. Nobody complained. The range master saw what I was doing and they didn't say anything. Nobody complained or whatnot, but I did violate a safety rule. And if I don't want somebody to go from the 25 to the 50 with an open firearm, then how can I walk this thing down there to, to clear, uh, you know, a squib? So, yeah, you don't really have much of a choice. So, yeah. Um, one thing I also wanted to talk about is that any new shooters out there, if you're looking for ranges, um, it's going to be easy, especially if you've got the disposable income, to, to not be enticed by some of the more frou-frou gun clubs that are out there. My best friend and his wife were looking at some of the ones in the Dallas area. We went to just the just the, the basic public range that you go shoot at, the indoor range, and it was very fair for pricing and stuff. And, you know, they started looking up ranges online, and then they start seeing the ranges that have the restaurants, and they've got the nice 
you know, they've got the, like all the amenities and, and I think that stuff is great. And it's wonderful that it keeps shooting sports alive for any income segment. But if you're a new shooter, try not to get drawn into that, that kind of an, an arena. Cause you're going to be spending a lot of money on, on your membership fees. This was when they told me how much it was going to cost. It was basically, I'm not lying. It'd be like, like a higher end golf course is what you were paying. Um, you didn't necessarily get free range time either there. You got the, the lounge and the bar access and the restaurant access and the discounts on guns. But I think it's easy for people to fall into that. And that's fine. If you got the money, man, go right ahead. But you know, it can get you know, expensive really quick. You know, I always thought that would be a cool idea. I actually talked to people about that. If any of you guys ever hit the lottery and you want to open up a range with a, with a oh. restaurant, you let me know. There you go, man. I mean, they're cool, and I've seen them online. And they, I'd love to go to some of these places. I know there's some out in Vegas that just look amazing and stuff, and where they live down in the Dallas area, there's some nice ones. But just what the, what they're asking for a membership fee, it's it's crazy. We're talking thousands of dollars every year. But you know, but of course, if, if the food's just, good enough, just then think you don't have about to it. <laughs> just think about it, man. You're you're paying for the privilege to go in there and pay them to do what you can do elsewhere. Right. Yeah. Well, for that, it might not be about shooting or being around Second Amendment people. It's about being able to say you're a member of the club. Yeah, they they looked into it and they said, this is nuts. For what we want to do, which is, I said, it's about going to shoot, not about going to, to and no offense, Travis, but it's not about going to have that filet mignon. Now, that's awesome to do after you're done shooting, but I'm like, hey, if you don't want to do that, go right ahead. But you really, the focus should be on, on your shooting, learning your gun well. Making that the focus, not, oh, hey, latte, you know? Well, no, hold up. So, now. Dano says you have to have a coffee pot. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you need a coffee pot, um, you know, maybe a box of Slim Jims. Uh, My range has That's pretty that much man. it. Snack machine would be good. I could use a pot machine. Soda machine would be nice. Uh, My range yeah. even has an ATM. <laughs> nice. Hey, there you go. That's awesome. That is awesome, man. That's because oh, they man. got tired of people bitching about them charging the five percent freaking fee that they were paying to use cards. Now, two yeah. of our local state ranges have gun stores at the range, which is kind of neat. It's it's yeah. state land; it's a state-run range, but the gun stores are privately operated. You know, sell your targets, ammo, even guns. I was yeah, the one that I went to down in Dallas, the the private, well, the public range that we went to is called the Bullet Trap, and uh, they've got a nice selection of rental guns. That'd be another thing to look for. Does that range? If you go to an indoor range, they have a good selection of rental guns, especially if you're in the market or you might be looking at another pistol and you don't know what to buy. Um, go rent several different models and try them. This was like ten bucks, I think, per range session to rent the to rent the handgun, and their ammo prices were very fair too. And they had a great selection of new and used. I was really impressed with it overall. Well, uh, I now, think that's the kind of range I like to go to. Yeah, rentals rentals are nice, and you're going to find that at some of the indoor ranges, and that's really nice. But here, that's where range etiquette can come in, uh, come in handy again. You've got the new shooter. He's at your range. Uh, he really doesn't know what he's doing. You kind of see he's fumbling around. You very politely talk to him, open a conversation, start explaining things to him. Next thing you know, you're shooting his $4,000 rifle that you can't yeah. afford, but he can because that's his first gun and he's rich and, you know, he doesn't know the first thing about guns. And, you know, because you took the time to not only try to help him with safety and, and operate in his firearm and make the place safer and more pleasant for everybody, he kind of says, well, you want to shoot it? And, oh, sure, I guess. And inside you're thinking, hell yeah, I want to shoot it. What is that? A Christensen Arms? I've never heard of that before. Noveski? Noveski? Is that a new brand? No, you know. Sure. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. And I, and I blame you because I went on the Henry website and just about ordered a big boy after you took off. I, I went. I was like, man, that thing was so much fun to shoot. It's just, oh, I'll never get a chance to shoot one again. No, maybe I'll just pick one up. Who knows? Uh, well, I've uh, noticed that since I bought mine, they've gone down in price about two hundred dollars. So. Oh. I think all guns have gone down two hundred dollars since the election. Now, would it be something? Or since just well, how long have you had yours? Yeah, uh, I I bought it uh, December, but uh, the first time I shot it was two weeks before you shot it, so it sat in the safe that long. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be something though? You show up at your range, you're getting out of your truck, and the guy next to mm -hmm. you's fumbling around, and you you need some help, and he goes, "Yeah, man, could you help me lug this thing out?" And there's this big case, and it's a Barrett M82. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, you helped me carry this out. Would you want to shoot it a few times? I was watching Navy SEALs the other day, and I thought maybe I should pick one of those up because, you know. <laughs> for uh, reasons. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, America. 
<laughs> um, all right. Anything ground else squirrel, you guys want to add at all about ring thieving? Tony. Yeah, what's up, man? I just said ground squirrels at Barrett. Hey, Tony. Hey, what? When you're at your range shooting your 44, do you ever have anybody give you issues about the noise? Nope. Okay. The only thing I've ever had about that was uh, when I first tried the gun out the very first time, there was a young couple in there shooting, and they told the the guy at the gun store counter said, please tell them that you're fixing to shoot this. But other than that, no. Yeah, don't okay. jump when it goes off. Yeah. At, at my range, the stations are covered, and they're boxes with, with uh, wooden baffles built into them. They're actually like giant suppressors, and it, they put it there because of the noise, because of the rich people on the lake. And uh, because of that, because they're semi-enclosed, I mean, the only thing open is your sides and your back, um, and obviously downrange, uh, any sort of compensator or any sort of big bore gun is going to have a lot of concussion. So if you're at a shooting station and you've got two guys, one on either side with a short-barreled AR with a compensator yeah. on there, you're go or a muzzle brake, really, um, you're going to get concussion on both sides. Or if you've got a guy on, on one side with a 44 Magnum and the other guy with a, you know, a muzzle brake on, on their rifle, you're going to get concussion from both sides. And it kind of beats and bangs around. And it, it even if you're wearing ear pro, it still hurts your ears and everything else. And it's really uncomfortable. Unfortunately, though, they have a right to be there. They're, they're not violating any rules and that sort of thing. I have had times where I've moved stations or I've just left early because it was just – uncomfortable but i'm not going to start a fight with the guy next to me he has every right to be there too and and sometimes that's that's hard for you know some people to deal with now, yeah, in all no, fairness, I, I, a, I, God. I have only been on my indoor range one time with the 44 <clears throat> uh maybe twice now that i think about it but when i bought the gun it was february so i tried it out that day and then as soon as the weather's warm, I go outside. Yeah. Just I know I get a lot of attention. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. I thought you were I was say, just because the damn things are so loud. Yeah. I know I get a lot of attention when I take my AMD out. <laughs> a 12 and a half inch barrel with a muzzle brake. I get like, a lot of people looking over and like, what the hell are you shooting? What the hell is that? Because that thing yeah. throws a gnarly Travis, fireball, that too. Where did you where did you pick it up with that barrel? Did they not import those with that size barrel anymore? Because I think I don't I don't think so. I think they all have the sixteen. 16 now, yeah, because mine's got the sixteen. Yeah, I bought this. Um, I don't know. Well, God, six years ago now. Oh, so it was way ago. before the AMDs really started getting popular. Like on it was. On it was when they first. Yeah, stuff. they first started showing up, and that's I, I didn't know anything about it when I bought mine. One of the guys that I worked with is a he is an ex Navy Special Forces guy. He was big into AKs. And he would he told me about it, and uh, we went and checked it out of the local shop, and and I kind of fell in love with it. It was such a cool such a cool piece. I oh, changed yeah. it all out. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've done a lot to it to make it um, to make it you know so that I you know it got rid of the grips and all that kind of stuff because they're they're pretty goofy. But yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a cool rifle. I love it. Hey, Squibby, Squibby's going to be bugging out here. Squib, thank you so much for joining us today, man. I appreciate it. We're going to wrap it up here in just a minute or two. But thanks for um, having me. Yeah, no problem, man. This is a good talk. Like I said, hopefully somebody learns something new or you go back and revisit it and maybe have a little more awareness when you're at the range. So uh, just kind of we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get moving here. Um, Tony, hey, man, anything you want to finish up with? Anything at all that you want to tell everyone? Uh, be kind to new people. Uh, you know, don't jump a straddle of them with both feet when they're making a mistake. Just Okay. All right, sounds good. Uh, nice, Rick. Any little bit of information to leave us with before you go? Any kind of wisdom that you want to impart? Um, yeah, if you're planning to go to Georgia, Tennessee, or Florida right now, don't do it. Yeah, better gonna need a bigger boat. It's uh, the the hurricane isn't going my way. It's veering off to the left now. So yay! Oh great! So I'm gonna get rain now. Yay! <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's all right. We can handle it. We're good. I'm, I'm hoping it veers way off to the left so it goes into Arkansas for a ghost. Oh, food. <laughs> so what, that's, that's so wrong. That's real. Yeah, that's um, real nice of you. That's real nice of you, man. Well, you know, you. I, I give as good as I get. <laughs> <laughs> 
Touche. Uh, yeah. Touche. I'm not saying anything. I'm well, not saying. I really have to stand with Night Strike on this one because if it comes up through him, it, the track shows it's going to end up here eventually. And yeah, the whole, the whole country's going to get hit. Then we got uh, Hurricane Jose right behind us. We're going to have another little round of it coming yeah, in. All I have um, to say on Ho uh, Hurricane Jose is no way, Jose. No way, Jose. No way, <laughs> no way Jose. Into production. No way, Jose, with the, with the hurricane on it. <laughs> yeah. Is that going to uh, be Travis. a Category 1? Oh no, I I, I think um, it's gonna build. It's probably gonna it's probably gonna multiply. If like it becomes a category one. I'm just gonna say that's a tropical storm no, for South. Carolina. I, I said it's gonna be a yeah. category one. Oh, I think it's a little, category little play one. on words there. A little play on words. Spanish there. teacher, you think I would have caught that? But you know, wow, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> category one. Uh, I say, the thing I said is that it was a cat five. But I didn't catch what he said either. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have, a, I have a weird sense of humor sometimes. That's nah, all right, man. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, Travis, yeah. any little words of wisdom, man? Anything for the for somebody going to a range? Anything we need to remember? Any any little? What do you want to say? I have no wisdom. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, no, and and I got to get going. We've we noticed got some, we got some tickets coming. Oh, now that's just hurtful. So was the blue dress. <laughs> so was the blue dress. <laughs> oh, hey, now man, come on, ladies. I, oh, dude, I, I had you. I had your back <laughs> in the story, man. Come on. Um, yep. No, I, I got to get yep. going. We got some tickets coming in, but um, like I, I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. No, anytime, man. Thanks say, for joining in. Um, like I said at the beginning, if any of you guys think you're interested in maybe you know me opening up a chat tonight, um, it might be a little bit late, but you know I might think I might do it. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, throw it in the chat here. Travis, let me know. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. We'll do, man. I will. Go ahead. All right. Thanks, All right, guys. man. Thanks for joining us. Later, bye. Ghost, ghost. Any little words of wisdom before we head out? Anything we should know about the range? Any, any little last little bits? What do we need to know? No, I just think that uh, nothing major. Just enjoy it and go to the yep. range as much as you can. I mean, just enjoy the time that you're out there. Heck yeah, definitely. Cool, man. Well, let's see. We had a few people join us here a little bit later. Let's see. Rich White's with us still on the YouTube side. Scott's over there. Grim's still with us. Uh, Trey Cam Cam came on over here. Just want to thank you guys for coming in. Your local gun nuts with us right now. I think we're all local gun nuts. Um, whoa, this is crazy. My <laughs> my my stepbrother's son is in the chat over there. Uh, Eli's um, over there. I didn't even notice that. Eli, um, welcome. I'm, I'm sorry. Should we not be cursing? No, no, no. Wait, no, we're we're it's good. We're good. It's there. all good. I, this is crazy. I didn't even see him, Eli, and he, he's here, but he's there because he's here because I'm at my dad's house. That is nuts. Um, let's see, Gun Channel side, we had Rafa come on in here, Raphael's with us, and uh, Patrick was still with us here, so guys, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's going to be good. Uh, next Saturday, I'll try to host a Caliber Corner, I really don't know what's going on, if anything's going on. Uh, Am I going to have to do it? Yeah, I, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, I, we'll see if we got a topic going on. I'm pretty pumped up, I'm going to be ordering the Ruger American Ranch in 762 by 39. Uh, if you guys in the chat were saying, you know why? In Nebraska, you can hunt deer with a semi-automatic as long as you got a five-round magazine. Uh, I'm mainly getting it because it's inexpensive for me to shoot all day. That's the big part of it is I've got a ton of X762, and um, I'm pretty excited. five-round magazine the only limitation? Yes. Uh, and it has to be at least – it can be a 22 caliber round, but it cannot be a 22 LR. 22 to 50 on up is what most guys are going to use for deer. Uh, yeah, you can use a semi-automatic in Nebraska. You just have to have a five-round mag. I obviously know what I'm going to say. Take the take the AK. <laughs> no, no. Take the AK and just go and buy a bunch of five round clips from California. You can probably get them cheap now. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, because I don't have them have off one. eBay. You can get get a whole like box for like probably like twenty bucks off of eBay. There you go. There you go. No, I just I just want to try. I'm just fascinated by this rifle, and I've wanted a 762 by 39 bolt action for a long time. I just didn't want to drop seven hundred eighty dollars on a CZ or six eighty on a CZ five twenty seven. So that's why I'm going this route. But um, anyway, so. All right, man. Okay, I want to thank you guys all for joining us today. Uh, this has been Caliber Corner number 12. We'll try to keep this train rolling. And, and guys, thanks for joining us. And Thanks for having me, Travis. Yeah, appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks for stopping by and getting up early and hanging out with me. Now you guys can all go back to bed. Go get your donuts. No sprinkles and no coconut. And then go back to bed. So No, no, no. no. I, I, I'm going one step further. Okay. Chocolate sprinkles with coconut flakes. You know, I'm going to boot you out of here. So <laughs> while, you're, while you're wearing a blue dress. Can I uh, do a recap of the rules? Please do, Tony. We should probably leave them. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, you have your four basic gun safety rules. Yeah. When you're coming to a new range, seek out their rules. 
uh, yeah. ask and learn the rules, and then there won't be any issues. There you go. I mean, there's, and again, when you're at the range, there's never a dumb question you can ask, especially when we're talking about your safety. Um, yeah, definitely. The only dumb question you to ask is the one you haven't asked. That's pretty much it. Especially, we just want everybody to be safe. We want everybody to have a good time, and I think people really get into it more if they get a chance to go to the lo go to their local range. And you bought a firearm, and you're a new firearm owner. You need to get out and practice with it. You need to know that firearm. You need to be proficient with it. You need to be accurate with it. You know how to safely handle it. In mind, if you're in the market for a gun for the first time, that's kind of the idea behind this uh, this podcast. So there you go. All right, guys. So I think that's. I yeah. want to be asking the question: How the hell did that happen after somebody yeah. got shot? Yeah, yeah. It's if, like if, if, if you need tips on how to load stuff. your magazines and your firearms, just watch Travis P. Levin's videos. <laughs> Man, I do videos on everything. Uh, tuna, handguns, rifles, whatever you want. It's all there for you. So Nerf check guns. Out season one. And then uh, if you have specific questions, there's always uh, Hit or Miss Tuesday nights, uh, 8 o'clock Central Time. Be there. Nice Strike is there for you. You can answer all Tactical your questions. Tactical Tuesday, Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, right before Hit or Miss. Exactly. So 7 Central? 7 Central. Yep, that's right. The time zone. The time zone where people need to be. So, yep. You can always go to the <laughs> Ask Gun Questions tab on every gun channel's page, and yep. the Early Watch will answer those if you ask every day, 8 a.m. Central Time until about 11.30. Yep. And on top of that, if you're not on gun channels, go check out gun channels because there is a 24-hour lobby chat. That if yep. you have any questions, there's plenty of people 24 hours a day that would be more than happy to talk guns with you. And let me sure. rephrase that. Jimmy's hosting the show, so it's 8.30 a.m. till about 11.30 or 11.45. That's awesome. That's you know that's good on the 24-hour gun chat. Anytime I have a question about something, I know I can just go in there, put the question. I'm going to get a good answer, usually without too much crap. I like that. You're not going to get shamed if you have a question. People are always awesome about answering on gun channels. So that makes it yeah. it's a very, very awesome website, man. It's very I mean, cool. we're, we're always going to have a good time at jabbing each other. But if we yeah. see someone that has a legitimate question, I mean, that's the stuff yeah. we actually love is to talk to legitimate stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. Because so many, so many of us out there on that on gun channels have so much experience with so many different firearms. There's bound to be somebody that can answer your question or at least steer you in the right direction. And I think that, that's the big one, just being able to find the answer. So good stuff. All right, guys. Well, Man, thanks for joining show. us. Great oh, show, yeah. Travis. I yeah, appreciate it. I didn't know how it was going to go. I figured range safety, we know it all, don't we? No, we can always learn. I think that's a good thing. So, all right. You guys all have a great morning, and we will talk to you later. This was Caliber Corner number 12. All right. See you guys. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Oh, yeah.